Good morning, America. Steve Eisen here. It's Friday, April 6, 2012. And you're here with the Casey Mafia, the nonpartisan group that meets every Friday. And if you're coming through South Carolina, don't hesitate to drop by any Friday morning at 7 a.m. And this morning, our, one of our guests is Alan Hunter. He's running for Senate District 18. Alan, it's good to have you with us. Thank you, Steve. And Alan, give us a couple of a brief summary of why you're running for office. I think that um, my science, technology, and business background is going to be a fresh, new, bold uh, approach to government in South Carolina. I think I've got a lot to offer. I've spent 10 years in state government. I've spent 20 years in the Air Guard. I've worked for large corporations. I've built my own technology company from the ground up. And I think I've got the skills and, and to help bring Columbia, Newberry, and Union a little bit further into the 21st century. Okay, Al. Well, we'll hear the rest of Alan's presentation here shortly. So, again, if you're coming through South Carolina, please come by the Shawnees Airport Boulevard, right next to the airport, uh, just down the street from Casey, West Columbia, Springdale. It's a great place to live. It's a great day here in South Carolina. I'll smile when I say that. And it's a great day in Lexington County. Until next week, Steve Bison signing off. Thanks. Next, we have Alan Hunter. He's also District 18. Alan's getting his last cup of coffee. Alan, don't choke on the coffee. Come on up. Uh, um, Alan's new, never run for office before. He's uh, got a good technical background, and Alan's going to talk to us about why he's running for office. Alan Hunter. Thank you. Very nice, Kara. Um, I agree with you on a lot of things, and, but there are some things I do disagree with. Um, I, I do agree with you on the term limit structure. On the education um, in the school districts, and competition between schools, things like that. We have a public school system. And I don't see how it makes sense that you have one public school competing against another public school when they all should be held to the same standard, in my opinion. So I think that if, if you take a look at school choice, you have to be careful and making it completely universal. I think there is reason to have some choice, but it needs to stay somewhat demographic. The school system is laid out now based on demographics. These two elementary schools come together to form this middle school. These two middle schools come together to form this high school, and they are based on demographics. They're not based on performance. They're not based on the color of the children. They're not based on the race of the children. The, the, they are based on this is where they're located. So I, I think a little more thought should be put into um, how we're going to handle school choice. Um, like you also, I, I do have a few issues with our incumbent right now. Um, you know, I spent 20 years in the Air Force and I've never owned a gun in my life, and I still don't. And I've never seen a reason to. Even though my name's Hunter, I don't hunt. <laughs> I fish, <laughs> but I don't hunt. And there's a new piece of legislation now, the Stand Your Ground legislation. It says, you know, you have the right to defend yourself if you're threatened. And, and I'm having a tough time digesting that piece of legislation. I feel like uh, my federal and state government should be taking care of me for my safety. I, I feel like I should be able to live safely without having to carry a gun. To me, here's a gun. If somebody threatens you, you're on your own. That sounds like I just got abandoned. I don't, I don't like that feeling. So I do have some issues with gun control. I think it's gotten a little too loose, and I think we need to rein it back in a little bit. There's a lot of things I think have gotten a little too loose, and we need to rein back to the fundamentals. 
I got a bachelor's degree in physics. Started out in engineering because my dad was an engineer. And then dad and I had a conversation. He says, well, you know, Alan, if you become an engineer, you're going to get put in this maintenance area. And you're only going to go so high. He worked at the mental health department. He was director of engineering for the Department of Mental Health. And he could never be a commissioner for the Department of Mental Health because he was an engineer. <laughs> so I got a physics degree. Did you know physics is actually the most basic and most fundamental science that there is? <coughs> it, it solves so many problems that you take for granted. Mr. Gettys, do you know why the <coughs> rocks are on railroad tracks? What's the purpose of them? Oh, uh, well, they hold the bed in place, is all I know. Uh -huh. I'll tell you, it's actually a lot easier than that. You ever touched a railroad track on a hot summer afternoon? Burn the daylights out of it. Okay. Absorb the heat, that's right. It, 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 that's exactly correct. Uh, if you, if you sit at a railroad crossing on a hot summer afternoon, particularly here in Columbia, where it really gets up there to 100, and you watch the cars go by, you can actually see the track bent. Oh, yeah. Okay? The rocks take the heat away from that metal and dissipate it into the ground. Yeah. It's just a simple heat transfer problem. But it reverses itself in the change of the season because it takes the heat from the ground and puts it back to the metal track so it doesn't freeze and let the train skid off. So it works. Both, it is such a fundamental thing and it happens all over the place and people just overlook it. I think that is what I can bring to the table here. I think that we can put some fundamental values back to state government. One of the things I talked about at First Tuesday the other day was I don't think lawyers make great representatives <laughs> because they never solve anything. They're good at creating arguments and they, you know, writing legislation and says, you know, my solution for the uh, uh, traffic problems in Lexington is to write a law to change the speed limit. And that's solving until you get somebody that actually has worked for one of the largest transportation engineering firms in the world, has the science and technology background, the business background, to uh, pull the people together that need to be pulled together to actually develop a solution, nothing's going to happen. Those are things that I think I can bring to the table. When I worked uh, for the Adjutant General's office, uh, we built National Guard armories all over the state. National Guard armories were funded 75% by the federal government, 25% by the state government. And the county donated the land. Okay. And then after 30 years, the state turned that armory back over to the county and it became their building. I had to go to Washington, D.C. to the Pentagon once a month and beg the federal government, the National Guard Bureau, for federal funding and bring it into the state. Then I had to go to the Ways and Means and uh, uh, Finance Committee to uh, beg the state government, give us 25% bond funds, matching funds, so that we can build this armory. You know where most National Guard armories are built? right next to the high school. It's a recruiting incentive. As soon as you graduate high school, you go into the military. But that, that's why that, that they're built in those locations for a reason. I just think that we really need to get back to some general fundamentals. When I built, uh, I built a technology company from scratch when I lived in Atlanta. Um, from 2000 uh, to 2007. And I actually expanded my company back over here to Columbia. 
and uh, with the help of uh, Jimmy Skipper from the South Carolina Economic Development Commission, we took over one of the old MCR buildings, a 52,000 square foot of um, technology building out there. I eventually ended up selling the company to IBM. In fact, um, if you can remember back to around 2004 Super Bowl commercials, when IBM would have this great big data center, and it was just this one rack, that was it. <laughs> yep. What I had developed was a completely um, self-contained network. Instead of having a um, router system here, a switching system here, a server system here, all in one. Same thing like stereos. Remember back in the 70s where you, had, you moved into your new apartment, the first thing you did was hook up your stereo and Okay, the tape deck's got to go into the turntable, and the turntable's got to go into the receiver, and that's got to, you know, and it was all these different components, and then all of a sudden the boom box came out, and it's all one thing. Same technology. Very basic, very fundamental, but very effective. Those are the types of things I think we need to, we, we need to keep in government, it is fundamentals. Steve, I, that's about all I have today. Any questions? Uh, I personally disagree with you on your gun control. Uh, that's one of our basic rights to have a gun. I don't own a gun, but there's plenty of 17-year-olds and 18-year-olds if I saw them running toward me, I'm too old to be getting hit. That I would have to do something if I thought they was going to hurt. And and also, that's one thing that we have to be very aware of. If the government has a means of controlling the guns, then the government can control us. Well, I understand your point, and. Um I, I'm not so much against gun control as much as I am against the government creating legislation that says you're free to just carry them anywhere you want. Don't, don't forget what happened in Texas a couple of years, maybe 10 years ago. A bunch of people was eating at a restaurant. Some guy drove his truck into the restaurant and then walked around shooting the customers in the restaurant. Lady left her gun in her car out in the parking lot. She said if she had had her gun with her, she would have stopped it. But she lost both her parents in that shootout. All right, well, I have another story. Um, my wife was an emergency room nurse, and um, we bought her a 32 caliber pistol because she worked very strange hours. My father and my stepmother went out of town and they wanted me to go over. They lived over on Forest Drive and I lived up in Gilbert. And they wanted me to go over and feed their dog. And so I said, well, I'll just stay over at their place that night. And I was going to carry uh, my wife's gun with me. And actually, I forgot and left it on the bed when I, when I was packing my clothes. When I got to uh, Gervais and Harden Street, about 11.30 at night, and um, I had a Mazda 626, and the door lock system was, you unlock my door, all the doors unlock. You lock my door, all the doors lock. I forgot to lock my door. Light turned on in the car, the guy jumped in the back seat, put a gun straight in my head. The driver, I'm gonna blow you away. We ended up Turning left down Harden, ended up um, down near Beltline Boulevard on this little back road. Got out of the car and uh, he took my wedding band, my college ring, uh, my watch. I only had $5 in my wallet at the time. So I've, been run, I've been robbed at gunpoint. You know what I realized? If I'd have had that gun with me, there's no way I had a chance to get to it. 
Yeah. And, I, and I could be dead. But the smartest thing for me, if somebody jumps in my car, I'm going to run into a telephone pole. <laughs> you pull the, well, actually, I consider. Well, maybe, maybe we can get the state to issue yeah. personal bodyguards for everyone. Who are all rushing to carry, carry guns into uh, that? Uh, uh, one more point. Okay. Where was the police? How come they weren't there to protect you? Okay. Yeah. Well, actually, when it happened, when it was over with, I was coming back down Beltline, and uh, a police officer came by, and I just locked my emergency brake and, and stopped right in front of him and. Um, and, and I'll tell you what happened after that. He shows up, a county police officer and a city police officer come up, and this is like, he was abducted in the city, but the robbery took place in the county. Oh, Whose yeah. jurisdiction so do you think it is? Well, thanks. Give Alan a hand, folks.